Here we go. Everyone should have their focus, their study guide, and their notes from yesterday out. On your whiteboard, please tell me. Right now, I am thinking, I am answering, I am responding. What brain waves am I emitting? Thank you for reading the sign, Neil. What do we got? I got one. What type of waves am I emitting? I am thinking, reacting, processing information. What type of waves am I emitting? My heart is breaking. My heart is breaking. I am actually talking, discussing, and thinking. What brain waves am I, Thomas? Beta waves. Beta waves. On your whiteboard, please tell me what REM stands for. I got one, two, three, four. Five. What is it, Marcella? Rapid eye movement. On your whiteboard, please tell me what waves am I emitting in stage one? Please stop wasting my ink now. Sorry. I know. Don't you owe me markers? Oh, yeah. I'm working on that. I mean, markers are plural. I one. Well, how's that working out? I'm still working on it. Okay. Next week then, huh? Yeah. Perfect. CVS has them. Good. John, what is it? Theta waves on your whiteboard. Please tell me, what are the slowest and deepest waves that we have? And we use them during stage four sleep. Good. Come on, come on, come on. Wait, mine says oh, beta waves. Yeah, sorry. I'm asking only what we covered the day before. So look at your notes. All the information is there. Everyone else behind you is doing the same thing. Did you write it down? You gotta write down what I'm telling you to write down, my dear. Okay. What is it? Uh, what is it? Okay. Delta. Uh, on your whiteboard, please. Don't make a note. There you go. Perfect. On your whiteboard, please tell me uh, what is. Uh, how many times does the average human go through a sleep cycle? How many times does the average human go through a sleep cycle? Good. How many? How many, Max? Seven. Seven. On your whiteboard, please tell me what is, uh, what stage do we have sleep spindles? What stage do we have sleep spindles? Hamilton. Two. Two. On your whiteboard, please tell me, uh, where is our, during our sleep cycle, where is our brain the most active? What stage or what's the name of the stage or give me the number. Good. Come on, come on, come on. When's our brain the most active? I saw that, John. What is it, Regan? Five. Five. Okay, on your whiteboard. Uh, nope, we're good. All right, here we go. Yesterday we got through consciousness, did we not? Hello? Yes, okay. So we are going to take an upbridge. We're going to get straight to it. So circadian rhythm, did we get to? Yeah. Okay, have you noticed? Perfect. So it's on your study guide if you didn't get it down. When we talk about circadian rhythms, hopefully you notice in the same time period, around the same time you get hungry every day. I eat my lunch during third period. I have a snack during lunch, uh, just because I'm so hungry. Uh, layover, uh, not layovers, jet lag is all coming out of uh, circadian rhythm. Uh, how much you sleep is coming out of it. Your hypothalamus is the one really regulating your sleep. It's not on your paper at all. All right, so necessity of sleeps. We have things called micro sleeps. Every single person in this room has done it. Done it. When you're really tired, um, you kind of like close your eyes and you kind of get a quick nap and then you feel a little bit better after. Yes? Hello? Yes? Yeah. Good. Okay. Wait. I'm glad you guys are here. Thanks for chatting. Uh, on the very back of your study guide at the very bottom, it says effects for sleep deprivation. You're going to write this down. So on the very back of your study guide, it's going to say sleep uh, effects of sleep deprivation. Write it down there. Every single one of us has experienced sleep deprivation. True, not true. Yeah. Some of you may be experiencing it now. Anyone here just completely depleted after your week? They didn't sleep? Okay. So, when that happens, you become, you have an issue concentrating and you become um, you can become really irritable. Okay. I get really hungry too when I'm like tired. Part of my charm. Anyway, Jamie. Do you have big plans tonight or are you sleeping in order to recover? So you're, you're going to relax. 
You're relaxing. All right, so you're going to use, get some alpha waves going here. All right, there you go. So sleep deprivation, every single one of us has been irritable at some time or another. So we were talking about this on your uh, notes from yesterday. You need to write down uh, adaptive theory. On your notes from yesterday, you have plenty of room. It's on your test. Uh, a lot of your test is going to be on um, drugs, which is why your focus and your study guide has a ton of drugs, but you do need this. So adaptive theory says that animals sleep in order to protect themselves from attacks from their predators. So essentially humans sleep at night in order so we don't get attacked at night. I think we can all agree when we go out at night, it's kind of a little unnerving, correct? Yeah. Okay, so with that being said, humans historically have uh, slept inside in order to avoid. Now, can you not turn around again? Thanks. I'm sorry. You're not. So down. So, adaptive theory is when you are kind of refusing uh, to be attacked, uh, so you sleep. And then we have the restorative theory, which is the most popular of the theories, saying that, in fact, the reason why you sleep is to essentially replenish uh, your brain, your muscles, and all that stuff. When you're exhausted, that's what you do, and that's why. This is my personal favorite. This is your workout. So, you need both of those theories. Um, I think both of them are actually on your phone. One of them definitely is. I think maybe both. Ooh. All right. Are we good? You don't need what's under the picture, it's just the definition. All right, here we go. So brainwave patterns, of course our brainwaves are going to be tracked by our EEG machines, which we discussed three weeks ago. Um, that's like the little skull cap kind of thing, and it has little sensors on your brain. What you do need is alpha waves. I would put a star next to this one because it's not on your sleeping cycle, because we don't really put it in the sleeping cycle, but it's important that you do understand it. Alpha waves are brainwaves that indicate uh, relaxation. Uh, so if you are just hanging out like Jamie and relaxing tonight instead of going out, uh, then you are going to be having alpha waves. James, is there a problem? Perfect. Are we good, Neil? I don't understand. we're good. Awesome. So we're done with the laughing thing? Because I'm really over it. Sorry. Cool. Okay, so... With this whole thing, when you're just relaxing, if you've ever gotten a massage or anything like that, what it is is like your alpha waves. Anyone here ever gotten a massage? No one's ever gotten a massage, ever? Okay, well, huh? Like a real one, have you ever? You should. Huh? You've given them? Yeah. Oh my god, no, I have no talent for that. But um, if you've ever gotten a massage, they're incredibly relaxing, you're kind of like in this weird sleep thing, not sleep thing, that's alpha waves. Have you ever done yoga? You seem like a yoga guy. You've never done yoga? Oh, man. Uh, so in the end of yoga, you do like this like prayer kind of thing. And like it's like super, super relaxing. You've heard of like the um and all that crap. Well, they do that, which is kind of like the corny ending of it. But it's like super relaxing. And when you leave there, like you're like, I feel so much better. You should try it. It's fun. It's actually pretty cool. It's a hell of a workout, too. John, you've done yoga? I heard that it didn't really go well because you guys were slipping around. Nah. It's pretty. It's a good workout though. Some of those people can do like crazy things. It really is. So like I've gone to like a yoga studio and done it, and like some of the, like the most athletic people like go to this one, and it's insane what they can do. And not me. I'm standing in the back just like dying, but like it's really. You should try. It's cool. 
Mark Ray likes it. He, like, he does it every once in a while if I drag him. And then you have uh, delta waves, which are slow, long waves. These are, I would write in your application, stage four sleep. Okay? For your alpha waves, I would write like a massage, getting a massage, something like that. You might as well start filling in these columns so you don't have to deal with it later. Uh, but I would definitely put a star next to alpha uh, if you haven't done so already. So when we're talking about stages of sleep, uh, this is number one on your study guide. It says REM sleep. Write it there, please. You need to know rapid eye movement. That kind of um, slowed some of you down. So make sure you have that down. So rapid eye movement, REM, is a stage of sleep when eyes move underneath the surface of the eye, um, eyelid. It's REM, which means your brain is restoring itself. You are dreaming. So in your application, I would write dreaming's occurring. And I would also write, leave a little space because then I have you write something else over there. So next time, like you have someone sleeping near you, I would just go over and open their eyes and see if they're doing REM. It may not go well for you after the fact, but at least you get to see if they're dreaming or not. If you have a little brother or sister, I would say this would be the ideal time to do it. The younger they are, the more REM sleep they get. Why do you think they get more REM sleep the younger they are? No, because they're happier. <laughs> That's probably true. That's probably true. But no, why Why in the REM, why are little kids more likely to have more REM? Because okay. they're, they're growing. Absolutely, their body is growing at such a faster rate. Your bodies are still growing now, so you have more REM than I do. You definitely have more REM than your parents do, um, which means why you sleep better than they do, which is why they wake up earlier. Hmm? Sometimes. Sometimes. All right, non-REM, which is what we kept writing on your paper yesterday, means non-REM, which is stage one through four. Okay, so light sleep. We did this yesterday, so I'm just going to fly through. Okay, so when we talk about REM sleep, it's called the paradoxical sleep. I told you you need to write something else in the second box of your study guide. That's what you're going to write where you had REM in box number one. This is going to be part of your application. For some reason, AP... Uh, loves paradoxical sleep. It was on. It's on most AP exams. What does it mean? Why is beta part of the paradoxical sleep and all that stuff? They had an essay question about it like four years ago. So James, the reason why it's called paradoxical sleep is because in your deepest sleep, what qualifies for deepest means it's the hardest to wake you up. So stage four sleep, and while you're dreaming, it's the hardest to wake you up. Makes sense, correct? Have you ever been woken up in a dream? Hello? Yeah? You're like completely confused about where you are. Okay? The reason why it's called paradoxical is in your deepest sleep, your brain is the most active. Hence why you have beta waves being emitted. I would write paradoxical sleep because of beta waves. That's what I would write. And it's probably going to be on your AP exam this year because uh, they didn't have it last year. All right. REM rebound is not on your uh, study guide, but I would definitely listen. Have you ever gone to bed, you're really tired, and then the next day you wake up and you're like, oh my god, I don't think I moved? Yes? Or when Neil went home yesterday or two days ago and he slept on his couch till like 6 in the morning, isn't that you? Yeah. Yeah? That's REM rebound. Because Neil didn't sleep well for a couple days, I assume, before then? Yeah. Um, his whole brain was like, oh my god, we need REM, we need REM, we have to get sleep. They kind of like crashed. Right? You got climbed on the couch or climbed in bed because you were exhausted. And then his brain needed REM sleep so bad to recover that his brain like was like, yep, and we're done. And we're out for 13 hours, right? Is that what you said? Yeah. No. See, I do listen. So with that being said, that's REM rebound. If he was getting normal sleep, his brain wouldn't have done that. Okay? Every single one of us have, ex have uh, had that happen too, correct? Yes? That's all. So like for instance, I had a couple football players today who didn't get to bed till like 1.30 last night, or like 12.30, 1.30, and they're completely exhausted today. Or in a couple band kids, too, who didn't get home till late. And they're like, just completely exhausted. And I was like, well, if you lie on your couch for like 10 minutes, you know you're just gonna crash. And he's like, they're like, yeah, probably. It's like REM rebound. Tomorrow you don't have tape, right? So you, well, isn't that nice? So tomorrow you get to sleep in? There you go. So if you don't get sleep tonight, then REM rebound's gonna be happening tomorrow. You're gonna wake up and you're gonna feel like you didn't move because your body is just crashing. That's all. Uh, REM behavior disorder is really cool. If you have it, and it's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly rare, in any of your dreams, you act out. 
like fully, like with your arms. So if you're fighting a pirate in your dream, in your bed, you're fighting a pirate. Like your whole body moves. So if in your dream you're swimming like a mermaid, in your bed you will be attempting to swim like a mermaid. Is that like sleepwalking? No. This is like lying in your bed acting out whatever you're doing in your dreams. Could you imagine how strange that would be? Someone asked me, they must, like, hold these people down, so that I have no idea if they, like, lock them in or whatever. So sleepwalking, which is on the bottom of your study guide, which is also known as symbolism, on the very back, second from the bottom, you're going to see it there, and it is occurring during deep sleep. Now, in AP Psych, we don't call it sleepwalking. We call it symbolism. So make sure you know that term for your test on Wednesday. And it's occurring. It occurs more frequently in younger kids than it does in older kids. Anyone here a sleepwalker? You used to be or whatever? Okay. So um, most people, in, everyone in this room at some point has woken up in a different room in their house and they have no idea how they got there, correct? No. Like you've just, you've never? Can't Even when you were like a little, little kid? No, my parents have told me that I've like walked downstairs and turned around and walked. Okay, so you've everyone sleepwalk at some point in their life. Okay, when we talk about sleep disorders, though, and it's important as we kind of keep going through our disorders, um, it means after young, after people mature beyond their twenties, because your body is still changing and growing, and your brain doesn't kind of settle down until like you're 25, 26 years old. These are people who are still experiencing those things. Could you imagine being like 50 years old and just sleepwalking? Yeah, well, you're not at 50. You're not dead at 50, okay? People are living very happy lives <laughs> at 50. But so symbolism is that uh, you typically grow out of it. Uh, most people have, like, their last uh, sleepwalking episodes around age 15, 16, 17. You typically don't do it in college. Could you imagine how strange it would be in college? That would just be the craziest. Uh, night terrors are a uh, relatively rare disorder. It is a sensation. So in your application box for night terrors, I would write sensation-based. Now when we talk about night terrors, these are sensations like falling. These are, uh, some people have night terrors that they can't breathe, and then all of a sudden their whole chest can't move. And that is a night terror. It's not sleep apnea, which is something different, which is also a not breathing thing. But night terrors are a sensation. There is no plot line. Okay, you wake up and you're like sweating and screaming because you fell. Night terrors, every single person on the face of the planet has had the falling down night terror. Every single person. If you have a night terrors disorder, that means later on in life when night terrors are very abnormal, you have them on a regular basis. And one of your peers' parents here at Plant High School has this disorder. So that's pretty cool. Well, not cool for them, cool for us, because we're studying it. Um, his mom wakes up every other night screaming for no reason. Like, she can't tell you what happened in the dream, nothing. She just screams in the middle of the night. How terrifying, right? How terrifying. Well, anyway, when you, hmm? When you get used to it. Well, no, because it's still like it's still like that whole like falling, that whole pressure and thing. I mean, when sh no, just waking up hearing your mom scream. Wouldn't it be like snoring? Though? No, I think I think screaming would still have a reaction of like what? I don't think you become unsettled like settled by screaming. <laughs> what do you got, John? Yeah. Sleep spindle. Mm -hmm. It's a sl sleep spindle, probably. Sometimes, like, if you're sleeping, you, like, you wake up, like, I feel like you're falling, and you, like, try to, like, brace yourself. Uh, that would be starting. That would be kind of flirting with the whole sleep spindle into, like, a falling thing. Um, in situations that you're not super comfortable, obviously, falling asleep in classes, I didn't know that was a thing for you, but if you do that, uh, not this class. <laughs> what class do you sleep in? Isn't that more interesting? No? No, I hate it. Oh, okay. Anyway, so night terrors are sensations. Nightmares are going to be plot-based. So that means, like, uh, Pennywise is chasing you through the sewer system of Maine. There's a plot there. Pennywise is trying to kill you. Ta-da. Nightmare. 
Everyone has nightmares. People who have nightmare disorders have nightmares every night or every other night. It's a big difference. As you get older, you'll have less nightmares, which is pretty exciting. However, I did have one a couple weeks ago or maybe a month ago. So, um, in court, people have tried to use a sleepwalking defense. It worked for the first time, but not the following two other times it was attempted. So, if you're going to kill someone and try to claim it was sleepwalking and it was beyond your control, I wouldn't. It's not a very strong defense. Go with the insane defense, please. It's much more secure. There you go. And problems during sleep. So, the first one is insomnia. Does Raise your hand if you know someone who takes sleeping pills prescribed by a doctor. No, you don't know anyone who takes sleeping pills prescribed by a doctor? No, I know someone who's an insomniac. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, then they've got to be taking pr no, pills. No, they don't. They, they, they refuse they, to they, take them? No, they don't refuse to take them. It's just like they get so severe for him that it, like, it hasn't done anything. It, it, it's really, really severe. Well, that's not good. Wait, can yeah. insomnia, like, like, triggered by something? Uh, yes. How many of you look at your phone before you go to bed? In the dark, lying on your bed. So do I. Uh, that light is really bad for your brain and keeps you up. Have you noticed it? Like when you spend a long time like scrolling through whatever we were looking at, the longer you look at it, the harder it is to fall asleep. Well, I'm hard to sleep after. Are you that good of a sleeper? I don't wake up until I'm asleep. God, I hate you so much. Yeah, no, that's not my problem. Uh, uh, looking at your phone, looking at that artificial light, it keeps people up. It lights up all different parts of your brain. And that's why they're saying that uh, Americans now are becoming ba worse and worse sleepers because we're so addicted to our technology. That's Which makes sense. That's the night vision thing. What's the night vision? Oh, the screen gets darker. Does it really make a difference? It makes it orange. There you go. Look at us. It's supposed to take away the white light so your brain is not 16. Does it automatically transfer after a time, or do you have to yeah, go in a program? Set it, set it, set it, set it. I have it on like 24 Oh, the orange? You don't want to hurt that brain of yours, that blue light? All right, there you go. All right, so insomnia, inability to get to sleep. People who, um, who are insomniacs, like true, true insomniacs, they don't sleep, which means they don't get into REM sleep. They're going to live shorter lives if it's untreated. Keep in mind, it's a spectrum. My dad is insomnia. Okay, so if you, um, my dad's not going to die because of his insomnia, but people who have true insomnia, who don't sleep, who are constantly, constantly struggling to get to sleep, uh, it's going to have severe health problems, even death. My mom said that yesterday, she's like watching something, and she's like, I'm going to die, I'm going to sleep. I'm like, oh, that's so funny, I'm going to die. I was like, you need to start sleeping. You need that REM, girl. All right, so sleep apnea is a disorder in which a person stops breathing for a period of time. People who have sleep apnea wear an oxygen mask to bed. Have you ever seen one? Do you know anyone who has one? Yeah. Your grandpa does? Yeah. It's actually pretty common. Like 40 million people in the United States have it. Like it's kind of a thing. Um, my husband's best friend has it. We went to Boston with him, and he stayed in our uh, Airbnb with us, and he just carries it around. He just brought it on the airplane and brought it in, set it up, and poured his distilled water in it, and slept like a baby. Slept better than anyone else. Okay, so what sleep apnea is? Everyone got it? Okay, so I have a video clip for you. Uh, the music is amazing, so I hope you enjoy it. It's a little goofy. It's like a 90s video clip on uh, YouTube that I found, but it's uh, pretty legit. Okay, so here's one of it. So what you just heard, obviously, he's literally gasping for air, correct? That's what sleep apnea is, is literally your airway is blocked. So what blocks it? I'm going to show you here in a second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so if you do not have sleep apnea, I do not have sleep apnea, okay? So what my airways look like when I'm sleeping is I have... When you are sleeping, both your nose and your mouth is open. Okay, have you noticed when you have like a really bad cold or you're really stuffed up from allergies, you don't sleep well? Hello? 
It's because your airways aren't fully functioning. So when you, if you don't have sleep apnea, that means your air, your oxygen comes in through your nose, goes into your lungs, and then you send it out through your mouth. That's how people breathe if you are a, uh, see? So the air goes past and all that. Everything's fine. That's normal breathing for people with no sleep apnea. So when you have sleep apnea, Okay, what happens is, is you have a really large tongue or you have too much, uh, essentially the heavier you are, the more uh, weight you have on your neck and that can also cause problems for you. You see more obese people have sleep apnea and some obese people who have lost large amounts of weight no longer suffer from sleep apnea. So it could be a genetic thing or it could be a weight thing, so it kind of depends. So. With sleep apnea, these people have really large tongues or there's so much weight pressing against their throat. So when they lean back, their tongue or pressure pushes their airways close. So no longer can they breathe out their mouth, but they also cannot breathe out their nose because it's pressing on it because your nose and your throat are connected. Okay, so no air is able to get in. So that means there's no air going to your brain there's no air going to your lungs. And how does our body respond if we don't, can't breathe? What do we do? It goes into emergency mode, correct? So we wake up and go like that, and then they fall back to sleep. So for a split couple seconds, they can't breathe. Not a big deal, correct? However, after long periods of time, when they wake up, they're kind of woozy because they lost so much air during the night, and their brain had short bursts, but bursts nonetheless of no oxygen to their brain, so it could be, causing, um, could be causing issues in their brain, as well as the fact that if it goes so long and it's prolonged, they may die because of it, because their brain gets so, uh, gets, has so much lack of oxygen to it, it may not jolt them awake. Isn't that crazy? So people die of this. In other countries, uh, people are dying of it here in the United States, you get diagnosed and you get your CPAC machine, which you wear every night at time you go to sleep and stuff like that. Um, but it's one of the big issues. It's one of the issues people are worried about in Puerto Rico. They've already, because uh, obviously you're aware of what's happening in Puerto Rico. They have no electricity, no water, no running water. Food is running out and all that stuff. Um, one of the things that on CNN this morning they were talking about is how people with sleep apnea are, could be dying here in the next couple of days just because it's been so long and they're not getting enough oxygen when they sleep. So if they're waking up every couple minutes or every 30 seconds, depending on how fast they get back to sleep, are they actually going to get into REM sleep? No, so that's hurting them as well. So that is sleep apnea. Okay, so he wakes up and then he falls back to sleep. So he's not getting a true restful night's sleep. There you go. All right, so another disorder you have, and this is on your sheet, is narcolepsy. So narcolepsy is a sleep disorder in which people immediately fall into REM sleep, which is pretty amazing in the video clip I'm about to show you. However, I think we can think real life, it's not so amazing. Are you done? Can I show you now? Can I show you now? Yeah. Oh, can I show it first and then we come back to it? Yay! This dachshund, Rusty, suffers from narcolepsy, a condition that causes him to suddenly fall asleep when he's trying to do other things. <laughs> Little is known about the cause of narcolepsy, except that it can be inherited. It affects humans and animals alike. <laughs> You're born it's another thing. Yeah, we're going to see it again. It's hilarious. This doctor, Rusty, suffers from narcolepsy, a condition that causes him to suddenly fall asleep when he's trying to do other things. Little is known about the cause of narcolepsy. That's funny. Except that in a dog. It affects you. How long? It depends. They could be asleep for maybe five minutes or they could be asleep for an hour. It just depends. Now, in a dog, that's hilarious. I would love to have Rusty as my dog. Because I would feel like I would just giggle and laugh, and it would be amazing. However, as a human being, 
who has goals for myself, is being nar uh, narcoleptic, good thing or probably horrific? It is horrific. There was a girl at Wharton while I was at Wharton who was narcoleptic. Do they like take Yes. Yes. Uh, every disorder is on a spectrum. So some people are super severe. Some people are not as bad. She was kind of towards the moderate one. Um, uh, but, yeah, she was on meds all the time. And she didn't have to wear a helmet all the time. But a lot of them do. Have you ever seen uh, True Life, like on MTV? It's kind of old. Anyway. Um, they do episodes, they do follow real life people. And one of the, they have a couple on narcolepsy. And there was this like 16 year old girl, super cute, graduated from high school. And she has to wear a helmet all the time. Oh, there's a kid at Coleman who has narcolepsy. Yeah, he's in the band. I don't know, I have a band kid who was telling me about it. And the kid wears a helmet all the time. Why does the kid have to wear a helmet all the time, Hamilton? Thank you. Well, you gotta live your life, man. You gotta live your life. You, the man's passionate about band. He wants to be a man. Cause think about it. If you're just walking around and you fall straight into REM, what are you gonna do? Must you're gonna yeah. You're gonna fall and you're gonna smash your head and stuff. So this girl um, on True Life, and I have it on my computer, but it's like a whole episode, and I usually show it at the end of the year. Um, what happens is, is that she's fallen six times at school, and she's had six severe concussions and one coma. Yeah, like it caused her to go into a coma because she was just walking in and she fell asleep and she nailed her head on a desk and it caused her to go into a coma. So she's going to college and her boyfriend and her family have become obsessed with following her and trying to catch her every time she has it. Even though she's on high doses of medication, they still can't stop the narcoleptic seizures from happening. So she just collapses living her life. And it's like destroying her life and it's destroying her family's life because they're afraid that she's going to constantly collapse and fall and, and hurt herself again. Isn't that so sad? I mean, this little kid uh, at Coleman apparently has a couple kids who just follow him around all day at school. Like, he gets assigned a buddy, and their job is to catch him. Which sounds kind of cute. Like, oh, man. Yeah, A, middle school. A kid walks around. Apparently, it's a really nice helmet, though. Like, it's, like, nice and shapely. It's not like a bike helmet. Like, it's really nice. That's what I'm picturing it's not a bike helmet. It actually goes, it hangs out really low down here. Why does it hang low or really low down here? So your cerebellum, cerebellum, your medulla, and all that stuff, all your severe brain functions need to be protected. So all that. So the apparently the helmet goes to like the middle of the lower neck just to protect. In case, if, for instance, when he has his episode, if he falls back, hopefully he won't hit his spine. Could you imagine it's crazy. So the lady, the girl who had narcolepsy, her mom also had narcolepsy. You're not allowed to drive if you have narcolepsy. I think we can all agree. But the mom at Warren used to drive kids to school every day. That's just funny. Well, I feel like if you don't have it like severe enough where like it stops. Uh, uh, I mean, that's a doctor's decision, I would say. Anyway, so other types of sleep disorders you have. Um. You have restless leg syndrome, which are some of my favorite commercials on TV. For a while, they were pretty popular. It just mean, means you can't get comfortable, okay? And that's what that one is. Like, your legs literally cannot not get comfortable. And you also have uh, people just pee themselves in, at, in the night, like grown-ups. They can't control their bladder at night. It's called uronesis. Isn't that so sad? Could you imagine? That is so hard. Because everyone thinks it's a little kid problem, you know what I mean? And it is a little kid problem. Most people grow out of it, but it is a real problem people are dealing with. All right, so Freud, dreams, here we go. The further we get, the better our life is. So dreams, um, dream, uh, Freud is the first one to do to see dreams as wish fulfillment. Keep in mind, this is the same man who believes you want to have sex with your mother, so keep that in mind. Now, he believes dreams come in two different things. The first thing is manifest content and Latin content, which is on the back of your study guide, by the way, of Freud's dreams. Okay, You need to know manifest content and Latin content because it's going to come up in three, more in three other weeks of content. So you might as well just learn it now. So manifest content is the actual dream itself. So if I had to dream that a bear is chasing me through the woods, the manifest content would be the bears chasing me through the woods. 
The Latin content of the dream is my mother's desire to be a grandmother is what the bear represents. And she's chasing me through the woods. That would be the Latin content or the hidden meaning of the dream. And you can make up a dream. Like, the manifest would be a bear running through the woods. The Latin content is my mother harassing me. Who is this? Okay, on your uh, notes from yesterday, you need to write this one, the bottom one, not the top one. You don't need the top one because it's revised. Uh, this was on the uh, AP exam last year, actually. So activation for information mode model is uh, the belief that dreams access information that happens during the day. So say, for instance, you uh, were tricked. You need the bottom one. Uh, say, for instance, Miss um, Bennett yelled at you today for giggling in class on a repeated basis. So tonight you're going to have a dream of getting yelled at by Miss Bennett in your dream. But in the dream, you're really going to stand up for yourself and you're going to say something super witty that makes the whole class laugh and you're the hero. That would be activation information mode, where information that you will actually experience will then affect how your dreams are. Would you say it's true? Yeah. You think? Yeah. I, I had a, well, I had a dream the other day of like my brother visiting me, and I, before that, he visited me, and I nagged him about something. Oh, okay. What about like deja vu? Like, if you have a Ugh. Or, like, deja vu is just know. like, you have dreams about things that you experience and know, so when something happens that is similar, we assume that it's the same. Do you think they're predicting? Do you think your dreams predict? I don't think my dreams are predicting. Yeah. I just think it's weird yeah. that it's yeah. like. But is that That's coincidence happening. or is that. I think it's weird stuff. Is it like, like vague things or is it like oddly specific things? Oddly specific. Or do you. Do, does it happen because you thought about it beforehand and you had that dream and that dream makes you lead into following these things? You're like, oh my god, this has happened before. No, no I, I would think that like, I've seen someone in a conversation like, like in years and then I've seen Can them you them pass that to me, Tom? Thank you, Tom. Thank you. That's weird. That's I, don't, weird. I don't know. What the hell do you want me to say? This isn't what I do. I teach this for like 30 yeah. seconds and I move on. All right, are we good? Perfect. So, hypnosis. We might as well get as much done now so we can keep on moving. Right, Thomas? Yeah. Thomas is super passionate about this. He's really excited. All right. So, hypnosis. You're the one who believes the animals, right? Yeah. That you can hypnotize animals. We talked about this. There we go. Okay. So, state of consciousness in which person is especially susceptible to suggestion. It is important that you understand that hypnosis is about susceptible to suggestion. When you're under hypnosis, at no time are you not in control. You're choosing to do something. So if you see someone on a cruise ship who gets hypnotized and they're clucking around the stage like a chicken, guess what they wanted to do? Clucking around the stage like a chicken. Yeah, because they wanted that type of attention. I do not want that attention. I would never volunteer to go to hypnosis because I don't believe it. So would hypnosis work for me? No. 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 So that's why... A hypnotist will never pick someone from the crowd that's not super, super ego, uh, eager to be up there. So when you talk about hypnosis, which I believe is on your focus, by the way, this part is being answered on your focus. Let's see if we'll get all right on the back, please. Oh, just kidding. There you go. Number three, by the way, this is what they're asking for. When we're talking about a hypnotist, it's a person tells them focus on what's being said. The person's told to relax and feel tired. Uh, the hypnotist, a hypnotist tells a person to let go and accept the suggestions freely. 
So allow the hypnotist to tell you what to do and just do what the hypnotist tells you. You have to be a willing participant. And then the person uses their vivid imagination. All right, guys, have a good weekend. You need to work on your outline. Or Tuesday night is going to be absolutely, uh, Monday night is going to be absolutely horrific. Have a good day.